Okay, so we have t we're talking about the two link planner robot, and so cons we consider a two link planner robot. But the first link is anchored at a point in the origin, so that it can rotate freely in a two dimensional plane. So we anchor our point, and it can rotate around wherever it wants to go. And then the second link of the robot is anchored to that free end, and so it can rotate freely in a two two dimensional plane as well. Um, so basically, what we have we have an anchor there. Again, our first one can rotate wherever it wants to go. I'm not spinning well. But it can go, and then we lock it at a point, and then this one can rotate wherever it wants to go so that we can get to any point that we want to get to. So, what we want to be able to do is, given the length of this first length, we'll call that L1, and the angle it makes with the axis, we call that theta1. And then the length of the second arm, L2, which is not necessarily the same value. And the angle that it makes from the line of action of the first one. So from wherever this one stops, what does that new angle make? We'll call that theta 2. How can we figure out our point x, y? And so to do that, we'll just break things down into some smaller triangles. So we know and I'm going to use some color to denote that. So, if we talk about this blue, this blue triangle, we know from dealing with the one link planner robot that the length of this side, I'm going to call it x1, is equal to the hypotenuse L1 times the cosine of this angle which is theta 1. And we know that the y value, I'm going to call that y1, is equal to the hypotenuse, L1, times the sine of this angle. So we know how we can get to this point here. Well, going from here, we don't necessarily, we don't have a right angle coming off of that to there. But if we do draw a right triangle from there, and I'm going to use red to make it, if I draw one that's parallel with the axis here, with that right triangle, we know I'm going to call this one this part x2 and this part y2, we have this angle in here is theta 2, but we also need to know this angle. Well, if we think about similar triangles, since this is going along that line of action, and these are both parallel to each other, then this must be that same angle, theta 1 in there. So what that tells us when we look at the red triangle is that x2 must equal the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is L2, times the cosine of this angle. And this angle is the combination of theta 1 plus theta 2. Similarly, for y2, it's going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of this entire angle here which again we just said was theta 1 plus theta 2. So my entire distance from here to here, I guess I can sketch that on there, x is going to equal the distance from here to here, which was L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So normally my y coordinate, which will go all the way from here all the way down, and I know that kind of got in the way of things. My y coordinate 
is going to be this part, the L1 sine theta 1 plus this part, which is L2 sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And that will work to uh, find where I'm at no matter which direction this turns. Um, I only dealt with these positive angles in the first quadrant, but even if uh, we rotate beyond that, we just have to keep straight and remember that uh, this angle theta is going to help us dictate what the sign is. So if this goes past 90 degrees, the cosine is going to be a negative number because it's coming, and you'll notice it's coming back that way. If it's if it goes um, to the side this way, the sine part becomes negative for this side of the triangle uh, and goes back that way. But these are our two equations that we'll use uh, for the other parts of this example and later in our homework.